my name is Joanne and welcome back to Flourish. We are so glad that you've joined us here again today. Well, in God's master design, he intended us to live with him in wholeness, with unending joy, without tears, without pain, without suffering, without disease, without illness, without disabilities, without death. <laughs> but we know that the devil is all about death and destruction. He is not a gentleman. He kicks us when we're down. Um, he wants to destroy us. And because he's not a gentleman, he cares nothing about those that are hurting. He doesn't care about innocent children. In fact, he thrives on pain and he revels in suffering. But there is hope because Jesus is alive and he has come to save. When the diagnosis is terminal, when you've had another miscarriage, when you can't get pregnant, when you're flooding your bed with tears, when someone you love is terminally ill, Jesus is our hope. Jesus is our hope. But how do we live with these tragic circumstances when they're completely out of our control? How do we not only survive them, how do we thrive in them? Well, that's what we want to talk about today because there is hope and that hope is found in Jesus alone. So to talk about this subject, I have my beloved husband, Tom, sitting across from me and two of our dear friends, Sharon and Bryce Danley. And we are so grateful y'all are here. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for so having happy us. happy to be here. Mm. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, there's a beautiful verse that um, Jesus says in his scriptures. He says, you know, in this world, you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. And so our hope is found in Jesus alone. So um, let's start as we always do with that foundation of scripture. Sharon, um, can you read a verse for us to tell us? We want to learn a little bit about who God is before we jump into our subject. Actually, wait a minute, stop. We want to hear about you first. I didn't give you a chance to <laughs> introduce right. yourselves. Tell us, our friends, a little bit about y'all. Oh, well, Bryce and I have been married for 31 years, mm -hmm. and we have two wonderful children. And what, what did we recently have? Oh, we had our first grandbaby Ooh, about two months yeah. ago. Oh, so my gosh. That's very fun. <laughs> the greatest joy ever. Yes, and you are sure. called what by your grand? What I'm, will be called? I'm Pops. Pops. And you are? And I am Noni because I'm 1% Italian. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> I'm Noni too. And I'm ah! Poppy. And I'm half, to, half Italian. And that's you're right. Poppy. That's oh, right. my gosh. Our names are close. Ooh, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Very fun. Oh, my gosh. That's great. <clears throat> it's as good as they said. It's, it's, it, is. it is, isn't it amazing? Yeah. Grandkids are a blessing. For those of you that are grandparents out there, I know you know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Our kids are an incredible blessing and our grandchildren are the cherry on the top is, is what we say in America. <laughs> well, back to God's word where I started yes. off before I got you know myself waylaid over here. Let's <laughs> put our foundation in God's word. Let's learn a little bit about God's character. So yes. Sharon. Yes, yes. Well, in 1 John 4, 8, it says that God is love. Mm, God, God is, love. is love. Okay, who's got another verse, Bryce? Out of Psalm 118, a few verses. Give thanks to the Lord, for he mm. is good. His love endures forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. In my anguish, I cried to the Lord, and he answered by setting me free. Mm. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I will look in triumph on my mm. enemies. Beautiful, beautiful mm. verse. Mm. God is good. Yes. And Tom. Paul wrote this in Romans, uh, Romans 8, 15. If God is for us, who can be against us? Mm. God is for us. So there's three attributes. God <coughs> is love, God is good, and God is for us. Right. So as we move through today's program, let's keep those three attributes of God at the forefront of our mind. And of course, God is so much more, but these are three of the, the attributes that we'll focus on today. You know, we all have a story. All of us, you have a story as you're listening. Today, we're gonna hear the stories of these three precious people and how they have triumphantly walked through them victoriously. And we'll start with you, Tom. Tell us about what you and your family endured um, when you were a little guy. Yeah, so I had a brother that got uh, very sick when he was two years old. And he contracted a kidney disease before they had kidney machines and transplants and things like that. Mm -hmm. And he progressively got sicker and sicker. And uh, finally, the doctor gave my parents the news that he wasn't going to make it. And of course, the hardest day of their life. 
And uh, compounded on top of that is that the hospital that he had to go to and stay at for three years was about an hour away from the house. So my mom would go back and forth. And in the midst of that, I was born. So I was two when he went to be with the Lord and um, <clears throat> changed our whole family. Mm -hmm. It was so difficult for my parents. Uh, my mom used to just wait by the hours in the waiting room out there with other family and other members, uh, other families that had terminal children too. And it was just agonizing. Mm -hmm. And I remember seeing a picture of my mom later in life and she had gotten down to 79 pounds. Mm -hmm. And she was not a smoker, but she started yeah. smoking. And I remember seeing a picture of her crossing her legs and her socks had just fallen mm -hmm. down to her ankles. She was just really skin and bones, the worry, the grief. And I think the hardest thing was that when Marky went to be with the Lord, um, my mom was not there. Mm -hmm. And it was Imagine. in the middle of the night and she felt guilty. There were two children at home. She needed to come see us. But there were some truly amazing things that happened. Uh, Marky used mm -hmm. to say that he would see angels in the night. And I had a visitor last night. He would tell my mom. Sweet. Mm -hmm. And so he would talk about a man in white coming to visit him. Mm -hmm. And so it, horrible for parents. But as my parents got through it, <clears throat> we found out later that all of the families that had children that had lost them, uh, all of them ended up getting divorced. Mm. It, it's a very sad thing, but the 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 rates for that, yeah. losing a child and then a couple not making it, are extremely high. And so my parents were the only ones in that group of about 20 families that stayed together. Mm. So there was sadness on top of that, too. Right. Oh, my gosh. You know, I think that's <clears throat> as parents, that's probably one of our greatest fears is our children dying before we do. Um, I can't even imagine the pain that your parents endured. In fact, I remember your precious mom saying one of the hardest things for her when the Lord took Marky home was that she knew she would never see his eyes again. That's right. You know, our life is in our eyes. We look at those and that's where we see the soul in our eyes, so to right. speak. And she said that was one of the hardest things, knowing she would never see that precious face. And so little Marky was five mm -hmm. when the Lord took him home. He suffered for three years. In fact, one of our children, John Mark, we call him John right. Mark. We keep that together. He's named after Marky. Um, but boy, what a, what a hard thing. So those of you that are listening, if you've got a terminally ill child or perhaps you've lost a child, uh, Tom can feel your pain. Um, and we are so sorry for what you are walking through, but we know that our Jesus is walking beside you. If you'll just reach out to him, if you haven't yet done that. And as we continue to talk today, Tom will share with you how he and his family found hope in Christ. But now let's turn to you two and let's hear, I know you've got a few parts of your story. Yes. Let's hear what you all have walked through. Okay, thank you, Julian. Um, so when we began our family, we had some very challenging times because um, I had a miscarriage mm. uh, with the first baby, the first trimester. And mm. when that happened, I was just shocked. I thought, what, why is this happening? And a lot of the mm. doctors or you know, friends would say, oh no, this is common, don't worry about it. And so, okay, well, try again. We had another miscarriage, second baby, second trimester. Mm. And when that happened, I was devastated. Oh my, I mean, yeah. beyond shock, devastated. Mm. And I remember thinking, God, do you treat your children like this? Mm. I can't believe you're letting this happen to us. But I'll tell you, it was in that nursery where I was had my back against the wall and I was weeping mm. that God started speaking to my heart for the very first time. And he said, I want you mm -hmm. to want me more than anything else in wow. this world. And I'll tell you, I didn't, I felt mm -hmm. seen by God. I felt loved by God. It was beautiful. Mm. So then they discovered something was wrong with my womb. I had to have surgery to correct it. And then shortly thereafter, we had our daughter. And four years after that, we had our son. Mm. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. So take it from there, Bryce. <laughs> so, so then we had our family. We had our, we had our little girl and we had our little boy. We were excited about that. Um, the, this, mm. the, net, the rest of the story takes, is really about our son. So when he was little, he was, uh, he was interesting. He was funny and really intelligent and uh, fun to be around. Um, 
he also had some things. There were some things about him. They, now we see them as clues. At, mm -hmm. at the time, we really yeah. didn't know what was going mm -hmm. on. But he had some sensory issues. So things would bother him more than a typical child. Yeah. Things like uh, a loud noise or a smell. Or there were certain fabrics that he yeah. just couldn't tolerate if, he, if they were part mm -hmm. of his clothes mm -hmm. or some foods. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All those things. And if he got upset, he might get so upset that we'd have to leave the movie or mm. leave the store or leave someone's house and go home because he just was inconsolable. Aww. So now I look back and see those things as clues. At the time, we're just parents. We're just right. trying to raise our kids. Yeah. And yeah. one child's this way, another child's another way, mm -hmm. and you're just trying to do your best. Yeah. But as he got a little bit older, the situation got worse. Mm. Um, he also struggled mm. with relationships with people. And so... Um, he struggled with his friendships. He didn't seem to understand, like like a lot of typical people, how mm -hmm. to be a friend. And and so he would struggle in his friendship relationships. And then as he got a little bit older, the story gets a little bit worse. Aww. So he would struggle if he would go to church and be around other children his age, or sometimes with his classmates. He would struggle with them. He mm -hmm. would say unkind things or hurt people's feelings and not really understand mm -hmm. why. Mm -hmm. Now I understand what was going on, but at the time, it was just something you worked on. Mm -hmm. This is not a good way to talk to friends. This is not a good way to be a friend, that type of thing. And, but when adolescence hit, the situation got much, much worse. Mm -hmm. um, he became depressed and mm -hmm. very, very anxious. Uh, he, uh, his, his relationships deteriorated when in his friend group. He had hurt so many people mm -hmm. that they started isolating him and excluding Aww. him and I mean, to, to my way of thinking, bullying him to some degree. Yeah. And we were concerned. We, we looked and tried to find help. So we went to counselors and physicians and things. And unfortunately, most of those people really missed what was going on with him. Mm. And so when you misdiagnose a child, you might give them the wrong kind of therapy. You might give them the wrong kind of counseling. <clears throat> You might give them the wrong kind of medication. Mm -hmm. And all those things just made everything worse. And he started to see us as part of the problem. Mm. Yeah, we were the enemy. And so <laughs> as, as the enemy, our home became a battleground mm. every day. I, I can remember, and I bet there's people out there that can relate yes. to this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can remember going to work, having a good work day, driving home, Getting parking my car and not wanting to open my car mm. door because I didn't want to go inside and see what bad things had happened that day. Ah. I didn't want to experience whatever yeah, was yeah. going to happen in our home. And so that led to a crisis situation in our home. Mm. Mm -hmm. So with all of that going on, God was still there. We were trying to honor him. We were praying mm -hmm. that God would show us what right. to do. Seeking. We were seeking solutions, yeah. all of those things. Most of the help that we'd gotten hadn't helped, but then God brought us two people that helped turn the story around. One of them to show us something, and one of them to teach us a bunch of things. Mm, and both of God. those people are, are Christians, they're followers of Christ, and God brought them into our story. Wow. So the first one diagnosed our son correctly. He has Asperger's. He's on the autism spectrum. He's a high-functioning autistic. And so people that are on the spectrum often struggle in relationships. Mm -hmm, right. They often um, struggle managing their negative emotions. They're also typically very, very gifted, very intelligent. Yeah. And they can focus with, to a great degree, which means they can accomplish great things mm -hmm. if they can just manage those other parts of our That's life. Right. Mm -hmm. So once we had the diagnosis, then God brought us someone to teach us some things. And we had to learn about what this was. We had to learn about what was going on with our son. And then things started to change. Oh, praise God. And in that learning, who's not, not your son's not learning as much as you are. You guys are, I'm sure, no doubt, learning new parenting skills and new understanding skills and teaching them to your daughter, I'm sure, as well. That's right. To help her cope with this mm. as she's walking through a lot this of this is, is affecting your daughter it's too not just the whole family yeah yeah too. the whole family dynamics mm -hmm. oh my gosh wow well thank you for sharing that story and the first part of your story with miscarriages <clears throat> two miscarriages wow ladies you know if you've lost a child in the womb it's an incredibly painful thing i've had that happen I've, we've had two miscarriages i understand that one thing that always brings me comfort and i'm sure you too sharon you bryce for tom and i one of the things we thought 
we have two kids we haven't met yet in heaven and one day we get to meet them those are souls for all of eternity so if you had a miscarriage or maybe you even had an abortion but if you lost a child before you had the chance to meet them, one day that precious baby you will get to meet when you come to heaven, which is all the more reason if you don't know Jesus, take him as your savior so that you can be united in eternity. Well, you sort of answered the second part of my question, y'all, and that was gonna be how did God redeem your pain? So if I didn't answer that fully, I'll come back to you. But Tom, how about you guys, your family? How yeah. did the Lord redeem the pain in your family of losing your brother to well, death? You know, it really started with my mom. And my mom, there's really <clears throat> only one of two ways you can go. You're either going to say, I, I can't believe there is a God. There's just too much hurt. There's too much pain in my soul. I can't take it. It's gonna drive you to God. And my mother was religious, but you know, in a mm -hmm. crisis, religion only leaves you with questions. That's There's right. no answers. Yeah. And so you're frustrated, but in Jesus, we find the answers. And so my mother committed her life to Jesus at that point. Mm -hmm. She said it was a fork in the road. It was gonna be one way or another. I'm an atheist, I'm a committed believer. Now she'd been a God fearer, she'd been religious, but again, religion just frustrates you. When right. you're looking for answers, there are no answers. There's no assurances. And so my mom committed her life to Christ. Mm. And there was a difference. Her life was led by worship. She sang, and she was a piano player. Yes. And every night after dinner, we would hear the piano going, and she'd be singing. She sang mm. in churches. She'd do weddings and funerals and all of those things. And that was her passion, was worship. And it started to spread to the family. And really, she took comfort in knowing this. Jesus said this to Martha, remember with Lazarus, right? and yes. he's dead, and he's, he's checking with the sisters if they believe, because he's going to raise him from the dead. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Mm. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Mm. Do you Hope. believe this? He asked Mary that. And she said, yes, Lord, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, mm. who is to come into the world. And we just want to say to parents out there, if you've lost a loved one, it will be too difficult to make it on your own through religion. Give mm -hmm. your life to Jesus. He's the one that you can stay anchored to. He's going to give you answers. He's going to comfort you. My mom, even though she experienced the toughest tragedy of her life, had a lot of joy in her life. She did. Singing, she was singing all the yes. time and sweet yes. and serving Jesus. And so there is yeah. hope. That there is hope. There is hope when we know that life does not end when we take our last breath right. on earth. This is just the end of life on earth. We That's have right. all eternity ahead of us, which is much longer than life on earth. My mom used to say something that I cling to, and I hope this encourages your heart. She says, if you're a religious person, if you don't take Jesus as your savior, life here on earth, this is your paradise. Right. This is the best it will ever be. But if you're a follower of Jesus, if you, if you take Jesus as your savior, you have all eternity in That's heaven right. with him to look forward to and with your loved ones that have gone before you. So don't let this icky place be your paradise. This That's is right. not worth forever. We want eternity with Jesus. Well, I wanna read you a beautiful quote from a theologian named Cornelius Plantega. How'd you like that last name? <laughs> Plantega. He says, we believe God with all of our heart, and yet we can have our heart broken by the loss of our child, by a treachery of a spouse, or the menace of a fatal disease. But we, we know this is true. Everyone in the body of Christ knows this is true. And yet, generation after generation of bruised followers of Christ have known something else, and they've spoken of it. It's the mystery of faith. When we find a hand on us in the darkness, a voice that calls our name, and the sheer certainty that nothing can ever separate us from the love of God, not in this life and not in the life to come. For faith in Jesus is a beautiful divine mystery, and that's why we call it faith. No matter how dark your circumstances, the unseen loving hand of the Father is upon you if you believe in him. So back to you two. How have you seen God's hand, his invisible hand, so to speak, on you in the midst of the tragedies? Well, in the midst of the tremendous darkness and pain, 
uh, God gave me a promise in Scripture, and he made it very, very clear to me what he was doing, so I would remember it. And it started with a vision, and he gave me a vision of a cross that was cut into a stone pillar. Hmm. And I sat there, and I thought, why am I seeing this? Well, he revealed it the next morning in his word, and it was from Isaiah hmm. 42, 7. And it says, open the, he will open the eyes that are blind, free the captives from prison, releasing from the dungeon those who were sitting in darkness. Mm. And he said, I'm telling you this before I do it. Well, I wrote it down, but truthfully in my heart, I, had, I struggled to believe it. Because this took seven years mm. for God mm -hmm. to, to, to do this. And so I just clung to the scriptures. I prayed Psalm 18 as a battle psalm, Psalm 35 poured my, my whole life into mm -hmm. the Word of God, and mm -hmm. I'm so much closer to Him because of it. Mm -hmm. And I love what you said, because God never wastes our pain. That's right. He always uses it, yeah. if we will let Him, to take us deeper in our faith with Him. How about you, Bryce? What did you cling to during those times? Well, I, I think a couple things that, that are important to our story is, with new information about our son, it, God brought us to a place of humility. Mm -hmm. So we had to learn new things, mm -hmm. um, new, new, new techniques in our parenting. I had to learn to have a better perspective and understand what my son was going through. It was really difficult. His life was difficult, not just mine. And once I had mm -hmm. more compassion yeah. for what he was dealing with, um, then I was able to, and, and I had some new techniques, I think we were able to be better parents to mm -hmm. him. And so I think that's a really important part of our story. And the second thing is, I really liked what you said, Joanne, just, and I had a pastor that used to say that a lot, that God doesn't waste your pain. Mm, and so I, I've noticed that because of the things that we've been through, miscarriages, and then all the difficulties mm -hmm. with our son, mm -hmm. I have a lot more compassion for other people when they're going through something mm -hmm. similar. Yeah. If they have a yeah. difficult child at home or they're, they've lost a child in some way, um, I can relate to them. I, my heart goes out to them and I want to help them. I want to encourage mm -hmm. them. I want to connect with them. And, and that's one of the things we were so excited about being on your program mm -hmm. to talk about this because we think there's people out there oh, absolutely. In, in Iran that have <coughs> similar difficulties <coughs> yes. with their children and don't know where to turn and don't know what to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But there's, but there's hope. Our, today, our son has a great relationship mm -hmm. with us. God has brought him back to us. Praise God. He, he loves us. We, he loves Jesus, he's turning back to God. God has God. Uh, mm. redeemed his story. And so mm. um, it Amazing. took a while. It felt like a long time, but when we look back, it's not as long as it felt. And, and God yeah, is yeah. working. Um, sometimes you see his hand. Sometimes you have to have faith whether you see it or not. That is a really good point. Sometimes we have to still keep believing right. even if we don't see the hand of God moving yet. So often he's moving behind the scenes. We just don't see the outcome of it until we go a little bit further down yet, Tom. And I bet you went to bed at night. There were nights where you thought, is this ever going to happen, Lord? And we see that in scripture. Yes. Is anything impossible for God? Well, we know it's not. But sometimes our own issue, our own problem seems impossible. Mm -hmm. But God was faithfully moving him forward. And look at what's happened to today. That's right. Yeah. And I think you also come to a point where you have to make a decision. Am I going to walk with God or not? Yeah. So is he, is he, yes. is he just a, a grantor of wishes or is he a God that's worth serving and obeying? And I think that when we came to that point, and that really happened really through the miscarriages, I think God's used that to sustain mm -hmm. us through some really difficult mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're an example of what Tom talked about with his parents. You, you had the miscarriages, so there's the death of two precious little ones there, though you didn't get to know them, yeah. this side of heaven. But what you've gone through with your son, that could have torn your marriage apart. But look how close you are. God has you know, drawn you closer together in the midst of that yeah. pain, just as he did with your parents. Right. Because again, God is a redeeming God. God. He sees all of the details, not just the parts that hurt us the most. He sees every single little detail. Well, I'm looking at our clock. I see that we're very um, close to the end of our program. It seems like it's just gone like that. Nice. But you know how we want to spend this, the, the rest of this time is praying for you. We want you to come with whatever burdens you're carrying. 
you've got a child that's perhaps suffering in a similar way to Bryce and Sharon's son, or maybe you've had a miscarriage or infertility, or maybe as Tom and his family have gone through, you've lost a child or another loved one, a spouse or something, whatever that need is, we want you to bring it right now to the foot of the cross. We wanna pray for you because we have a God hearing and a God answering God. And even though we're here in America and you're there in Iran, Together we can meet at the throne. So why don't we spend this last, these last moments praying and all of you take turns yeah. praying for those that are hurting. Let's do now. it, Tom, thank you. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you that you are with people mm -hmm. in pain. Yes, and Lord. Father, I just think of the families that are struggling with terminally ill children mm -hmm. or ones that have gone on to be with you. And it doesn't make sense and it's difficult and it's hard and there's sleepless mm -hmm. nights. And it's, uh, it's a time where we just have to to know even when we don't see you working, to trust your character. We trust your character because we know you're a good God and you're working behind the scenes. It may not be on our time schedule, but God, would you just wrap your arms around those mm -hmm. that have lost children yes, and those that are dealing with terminally yes, ill yes, children uh, right now, Lord Jesus. Just be, clo be close, be, be, put your arms around them. In Psalm 73, you say you hold us by our right mm, hand yes, when we're in desperation. We ask that in Jesus' name. Yes, mm. Lord. And, and we know that there are women in Iran and the surrounding countries that are in agony because they have lost children, yes. babies they've never got to hold yet. Mm. Um, yes, they Lord. are watching their children fall apart. Some yes. are not even able to have children. And it's mm. the cry of their heart, fill their womb, Lord God. Mm. And Lord. also dealing with the, the concern, oh God, do you see me? Do you That's love right. me? And Lord, we mm. know you are the God of love. So would you reveal yourself? Would you show these precious women that yes mm -hmm. you are there and yes, you love Lord. them and help her to cling to you that's right Lord God. Mm -hmm. in your name we pray mm -hmm. and lord we pray that you'd be with with uh, husbands and wives with with fathers and mothers in iran and other countries lord that are struggling with children they're struggling with issues like mm -hmm. autism or drug abuse or alcohol abuse mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. addiction to mm -hmm. video games or other things lord where mm -hmm. they're they're discouraged. Um, they, they feel hopeless, yes. Lord, but we know that you are the God of yes, healing and the God of light. Yes, and we Lord. pray that you'd bring them to a place uh, where they could yes, uh, yes, bring something to them, Lord, that they need. Uh, mm -hmm. We pray that you redeem their story, that you would give them encouragement, mm -hmm. that you give them insight, that you give them wisdom, Lord, and that you draw them and their children into a closer walk with you. Yes, Lord. In your name we pray. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, Jesus. I agree with all these beautiful prayers. And in addition, Lord, I pray for those who are listening and saying, I want what they have. They have the hope that I'm longing for. How do I get that hope? Jesus, may they call on your name. There is power in the name of Jesus. May they say your name right now, call on you and say, Jesus, That's save right. me, save my family, save my children, save my marriage, save my broken heart. Jesus, you are our hope. So even at this moment, may those men, women, and children call on your name and may they be saved for all eternity so that they can be reuni reunited with their loved ones if they've lost someone already. You are our redeeming God, our God that hears, our God that loves, and our God that saves. We pray all of this, Jesus, in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Bryce and Sharon. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, friends, for joining us here today. As always, it's an honor to be in your living room with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. May the Lord rise his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. Even though I twisted two of those around, I pray that blessing on you in the name of Jesus. We'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye now.